Hi, I'm TJ with Vertra, and today we're going to be talking about Vertra's vAuthor software. With me is Richard, who uh, is one of our uh, vAuthor trainers. And uh, Richard, you know, vAuthor uh, is an incredibly powerful uh, piece of software. Can you give us a brief overview of what exactly it does? Sure. So we developed vAuthor in use for the end user to drag and drop backgrounds and environments drag and drop characters to build their own content based on their own departmental needs. Okay, so you're saying that an agency can use pictures and people from their own jurisdiction and make scenarios within our simulators uh, to actually train in the environment they work in. That is correct. So the end user can take their cell phone and take panoramics of geo-specific locations. So situations that they have encountered in the past. Like or a school or something school like that. A school shooting, exactly. They can okay. go to that school and take a panoramic background and use that environment to build content with. So we have a, a library full of uh, character assets that were filmed um, on a green screen. So they are actors that we've hired, not CGI characters. Okay. Um, so they can build and, and, and develop content based off of situations with those characters involved. So uh, one of the nice things to point out about having live actors versus CGI is the, uh, the detail you get. Uh, CGI, you're not going to get a lot of facial and other physical indicators that officers are trained to look for. That is correct. Versus yeah. a, a live actor uh, that's professionally filmed. Right. Not only are they live actors, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, they all have the appropriate force states, so they'll react to being shot or tasered, and then also, uh, don't they have different reactions, like they can say things and interact with the, the student in the simulator? Yeah, so we have uh, characters that we filmed with multiple use of force responses with taser, firearm, OC, okay. um, and as, as well they have dialogue options so you can interact with the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have bystanders who are walking around talking on their cell phones, uh, recording situations with their cell phones, um, and a lot of the characters are multi-behavioral, which, which means they can interact with characters with inside of the scenario, oh, they wow. can interact with the trainee in, in the simulator as well. Uh, now this, this sounds great, and I think you know it's an exciting product. But it also sounds very complicated. Um, is this something that you know uh, someone needs to have really high-end computer skills or anything like that in order to use? Not at all. So we have a two-day training course that comes with the purchase of your vAuthor software. Okay. They'll walk you through step by step and how to author, how to make your own backgrounds, and how to produce content based on your departmental needs. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that sounds great. It's kind of drag and drop from what I understand. Very easy drag and drop functionality, correct. Well, let's take a look at vAuthor and uh, show just how easy and how amazing the results can be. Richard, uh, we have the vAuthor software opened up now, and uh, let's get into making our own custom scenario here. And uh, I know you mentioned earlier that you can use your own pictures, um, your own panoramics, in this uh, software. So could you go ahead and show me how that's done? Yeah, that is correct. So I have a, a Vertra lot that I went out back behind uh, in our parking lot and took my cell phone and recorded a panoramic. Okay. I'm going to show you real quickly how I got that panoramic from my phone to the vAuthor suite. Now, you're, you're just using the panoramic function on, in this case, an iPhone, right? Yes, correct. And you just take a panoramic picture like you would when out visiting something, right? Correct, yeah, right. exactly, just like that. Uh, so with inside of vAuthor, we have a, a panoramic background editing tool. This allows me to go through and search for that image. So I'm going to locate the virtual lot from my cell phone. Hit open. Now this allows me to go through and set different parameters for this background. Um, one of those being sec uh, selecting overlays and cutting them out so you separate foreground objects from the background. So if I wanted to place a character behind this brick wall, mm -hmm. I can go ahead and cut out this brick wall and, and that will create an overlay for the background. Now, now, is that pretty complicated? I mean, here we have, a, let's say, a little bush. What if I wanted to make that um, you know, cut out so I could put someone behind there? So yeah, we've made this as user-friendly as possible. We have a, a paintbrush tool uh, where I can change the diameter of the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, you want this bush cut out. Yeah make this diameter a little smaller, and I can go through and, and just simply paint out this bush. And okay. that will become a new overlay where now you can place different assets and characters behind that bush. Now, a bush uh, really doesn't offer any ballistic protection. That is correct. Uh, compared to this brick wall, is there anything you can do about that? Sure, so I can set uh, penetration materials to uh, certain overlays with inside the background. Okay. So for this brick wall, I can, I can set a uh, 
penetration material for you know pistol to not penetrate but rifle to penetrate. Okay. Uh, so for this bush, I can do you know uh, pistol and rifle penetration, but no OC or or uh, taser is going through that. Bush. Gotcha. Uh, whatever parameter you want to apply to that, we can apply the penetration materials to it. All right. Well, let's put this into our background. Okay. So if I locate that background with inside of the background library in vAuthor, I can drag mm -hmm. and drop that over to the preview window. Oh, and there, there it is. is. Yep. All right, well, let's uh, go to that wall we just made, and let's put a, a person shooting at the student officer from behind that wall. Okay. So if I go to the scene assets, I have in this library everything from characters to standalone props to conceal and cover to reactive range targets, so on and so forth, special effects. Uh, if I want to go just to the character library, I had that categorized up here at the top. Nice. So we have characters, and with inside the character library, I can scroll and look for a hostile character. Um, so let's take this male rifle hostile from cover. I can drag and drop him into the scene, and I have full control over his position within inside the scenario, uh, his scale, how far back in the environment he is, and as well, I have the ability to push him back behind this overlay, which we cut out earlier. Just like that. Just like that. And now he's standing behind the wall. Yep. Uh, and rarely would someone be alone in a parking lot, so let's put in a bystander. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab this male cell phone character and place him on a separate screen. Let's go ahead and put him on screen three. Same thing, drag and drop him. I have the uh, full capacity to move him around the environment, change his scale. Now, I, I, I'm looking at him here. That, that's a live actor that was filmed, not CGI, correct? Yeah, so we don't use 3D characters because you don't get all the facial expressions and muscle movements that you would, body language that you would normally get out of a realistic character. Okay. So we hire professional actors to play certain roles. Yeah, and it just helps that immersion and the training value. Um, also, now, what about the hit zones? Like, you know, the guy with the gun. Uh, if an officer engages that person with, you know, a firearm, pepper spray, or electronic control weapon, um, do we have to go in and tell it to do certain things based on what they're doing? So I tried to automate as many processes as I could, and that was one of them, is that I took into consideration the amount of time it takes to add in certain hit zones for characters if they're in their shooting state, you know, if engaged, what state do they branch to? Mm -hmm. So I've automated that on the back end, so they automatically will, will respond and go to their corresponding use of force response. That's a great time saver it is. for the person making these. And then, now what about our our bystander here, if an officer, let's say, shoots at the hostile or the hostile shooting at the officer, that guy's not just gonna stand there with a smile on his face. Correct, so I can go ahead and have this character actually listen for the other character shooting. Oh, wow. So once he sees or hears that character into his shooting state, I can have this character branch to a cower state or have him run away from the scene, so on and so forth. I can also do um, you know, actor events where I have the trainee in the simulator fires a shot at the screen, this character can go into a cower state as well. That's great. So I can have interactions between characters within inside the scenario and interactions with characters from the trainee's perspective. And that can all be automated, right? Correct, yes. So the instructor can focus on the training versus clicking things, especially making people cower or something exactly, like that. Exactly, yes. Uh, that's all, all really great features um, and just adds to the immersion uh, of the uh, simulation. Um, now, not every scenario needs to be uh, a, a shootout or anything like that. Sometimes we just wanna be able to work on our skills. Maybe it's an officer's drawing and firing, maybe it's just firing. Um, we have the ability to make a virtual range here, which also saves time and money and reduces risk of injury and is just as effective and accurate as the real life thing. That is correct. So I can go through and create a brand new scenario here, drag a range background out. Okay. Inside the scene assets, I have a reactive target section, which I have steel torsos, pepper poppers, um, you know, rovers, uh, Ivans, clay targets. So anything that you would need to build your own course of fire with. Well, let's, let's throw a popper in. So if I drag these pepper poppers into the scene, I can change their position, their scale, uh, how far back in the scene they are. I can also duplicate these characters and, and create a pepper popper challenge scenario per se. No, I, I see them as you're placing them there, they're standing up. That animation, I mean, when, you, when I shoot these in the simulator, they're gonna fall down like a real pepper popper. Yeah, they'll fall down exactly like a real pepper popper would if you engage them. That, that's great. Um, now, you know, you put in all this time and effort into making a scenario. Um, we have the ability to test it as we, 
go along, correct? Correct. So that's one of the powerful tools inside of vAuthor is you have the ability to test the scenario on a standalone system. If your system happens to be in a different building or facility or room as your simulator, you can test it on the desktop. So if I go ahead and save this as range poppers, mm -hmm. I can save and export this to the local desktop, and we can test it right here on the computer. So let's go ahead and go ahead into Voss, which is Virtua's operating station, and I have range poppers. I'm going to hit Run Simulation, mm -hmm. and then using my mouse, oh, I have right. the ability there's right. the poppers to engage and interact with these pepper popper targets. Just like that, we just set up a virtual range. That's right. That In a matter easy. of seconds. Yep. That's great. Well, Richard, uh, you know this software is amazing. Um, I think one of the other great things about it is we have. Uh, a ton of pre-made vAuthor simulations out there for, for people to use right now, correct? Yes, so there are uh, several uh, pre-made vAuthor scenarios that the end user has the ability to take and modify. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to, to take a panoramic on your cell phone and re take one of our pre-assembled scenarios, you can drag and drop a brand new environment into that scenario. Uh, that's great. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out to show us um, this amazing tool, the vAuthor software. Sure, I think it's a huge asset to uh, law enforcement training. Um, and I'm, I'm glad we have something like that available to, to our officers. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, joining us here uh, for the vAuthor demonstration. And just want to remind everyone to train hard and stay safe.